Hello students, welcome to this session. In this class, we are going to do certain general definitions of life. So let us understand what are the general terms linked with life. The first thing that we are learning here is called an optical medium. Now, what does you mean? What do you mean by optical medium? Anything, material or non-material. That means it could be made up of some material matter or it could not be. Through which light energy can pass partially or wholly is called an optical medium. That means if light is able to pass through a medium, we call such a medium as optical medium. Example could be we know light can pass through air. That means it can pass through gas. We know light can pass through water or a liquid. And it can also pass through solid which are such as glass which is transparent. Right? So optical medium material is an example that it can pass through all the three states of matter or non-material. The example here is the space between earth and sun is having no material. It is vacuum. It is absence of any material but light can pass through it. So it is also an optical medium. What is optical medium? A medium through which light energy can pass partially or wholly. Right? Let's talk about a homogeneous medium. Now, what do you mean by a homogeneous medium? An optical medium which has a uniform composition throughout is called a homogeneous medium. What do you mean by uniform composition throughout? Now, let's take a look at an example. We talk about glass. It is made up of one single type of material. Diamond, it is also made up of carbon one material distilled water no other material inside water other than water a sheet of clear plastic vacuum or pure alcohol are homogeneous medium why because they are made up of one single material with uniform composition throughout the glass is not different as we go from left to right or top to bottom the same is true for pure alcohol or water but if I talk about is there any other kind of medium as well, the answer is yes. We can see light passes through heterogeneous medium as well, which is an optical medium which has different composition at different points. Now, what do you mean by this? When I talk about different composition at different points, that means as we go from one point to another, the composition of that material may change. For example, air. We know air is a mixture of gases and though we know the mixture composition accurately, we know that as we go from one point to another, let's say we go on high up the altitude, the composition of air decreases. It has a lower pressure, right? Same thing is that when the winds are blowing, the pressure of air may be different at different points, hence the composition as well. So, a heterogeneous medium with different composition at different points, the best example is air, muddy water, fog, mist, clouds, smoke, etc. Right? But as we already discussed, both homogeneous and heterogeneous are considered to be why? Because they through which the light can partially or wholly can pass is an optical medium and homogeneous and heterogeneous both allow the light to pass through them. Right? Let us now talk about other kinds of medium which are there such as transparent medium. We all must have seen windows made out of glasses. Right? Now through those glass windows we are able to see what is happening on the other side of the window. Why? Because light can pass through these windows, making it what? Transparent. So, transparent mediums are those mediums through which the light energy pass completely. It allows the light energy to pass through it very easily and completely. Examples would be glass, diamond, thin layer of water, air, vacuum and even clear plastic, alcohol and benzene. So here you can see there is a giraffe. You can see the giraffe through a medium called transparent completely. But on the other hand, there is one picture where you are not able to see the giraffe's body very clearly. What is this kind of material? This kind of material is called translucent medium. 
a medium which partially allows the light energy to pass through it is called translucent medium. For example, ground glass, muddy water, smoke, dust filled air, fog, mist, clouds, oil paper, butter paper, tissue paper are translucent through which we can make out that something is there on the other side but we are not able to see exactly what is it. What is this? This kind of medium is called translucent medium. So right now the giraffe is visible clearly from the transparent side but not from the translucent side. So there is another kind of bodies or medium which is called opaque. Now, opaque bodies are those bodies which do not allow the light at all to pass through them, making them exactly like a block for the light to go. So, if we talk about the windows which are made up of glass, the light can pass through it. But what about the walls of the room? You cannot see through them. Why? Because the light energy cannot pass through them, making them opaque. So here you were able to see the giraffe's head clearly via transparent medium. The body was somewhat visible but was blurry through a translucent medium and in the opaque side you were not able to see anything because it does not allow the light at all. So examples would be bricks, stones, wood, articles made from wool, cotton, articles made from metals, coal, etc. So we cannot see through the opaque bodies because they do not allow the light energy to pass through them. We can somewhat see through the translucent wave bodies because they partially allow the light to pass through them and transparent medium completely allows the light to pass through them. Hence, we are able to see through them clearly, right? Now, some more definitions in terms of light is point source of light. What do you mean by a point source of light student? A source of light which, of the, which is of the size of a pinhead. So if I make a dot, so if I make a pinhead here, a dot, it is as small as how a pinhead will look like, right? This dot, if I put a source of light here, which is as small as this pinhead, I call it as a point. So a source of light, which is the size of a pinhead, of a common pin is called a point source. Now something very interesting about the point source is it gives away light in all the direction equally. Now talking to you with a very cool fun fact here, even our sun that is so 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 gigantic is taken to be a point source. How can it be taken to be a point source? Because when we talk about sun to be very, very big, it is also very, very far off. Not just sun, talk about those stars. We know that stars are very, very big, even bigger than our sun. But as they are so far off, they seem to be like a small dot in the sky, making them as a point source of light. What is an extended source of light, student? An extended source of light is any source of light which is bigger than the point source of light. Right. It is called as extended source. Why so? So when I talk about a point source, we know it is one single dot and the light is emitted in all the directions. Right. But what about an extended source? Have you seen a tube light at your house? What is it? Is it a point source? No. It is an elongated light tube which is giving light. It is again a luminous body but it is not a point source. So any source of light which is bigger than the point source of light is called an extended source of light. A burning candle, a glowing electric bulb and a fluorescent tube etc are my extended source of light. Right students? Let's now understand when we talk about light, we cannot see it. I told you that light is an invisible source of energy. I told you that light is an invisible form of energy. So when I talk about how do we actually make use of different geometrical tools to show how light is traveling, we draw a ray of light to show the path of light. So a ray of light is the path along which the light energy travels in a given direction. It is called a ray of light. For example, you can see the first diagram. This is a ray of light. The light is going from this direction A to direction B because the arrow is pointing in this direction. So a light ray simply shows me in which direction my light is traveling. So it shows me the path along which the light energy travels. Right? It is represented by a straight line. The arrowhead shows the direction of the light energy travel, right? The next point is beam of light. 
Now, when I talk about the light coming from a source of light such as an electric bulb or an electric torch or an electric tube, we know the light is not coming only in one ray. It is going to be a lot of rays coming together. So, we talk about a beam of light. What is a beam of light? A collection of large number of rays of light is called the beam of light. Right? So, when large number of rays come together, we get the beam of light. It again has direction on each of the rays showing the actual path of the movement of the light enough. Right? Now, when we talk about parallel beam, when a large number of rays are traveling and they are traveling parallel. So, this is ideally parallel. What could be the other beam? Now, if I talk about beams are coming, this is also a beam of light in all the direction. Are they parallel? No, they are not. So, when we talk about parallel beam of light, so a large number of rays when travel parallel to each other, then the collection of such rays is called parallel beam of light. Right? Let's now understand divergent beam. As I already told you, what is a point source? A point source is a very small, uh, the size of a pinhead source of light. Now, if I talk about a point source, it gives away light in all the directions. So, it seems to be giving light and the light rays seems to be going away from each other. Right? Such rays are called divergent beam of light. So, let's read this. When the rays of light starting from a point travel in various directions, then the collection of such rays is what we call as divergent beam of light. For example, the rays coming out from a bulb or a burning candle or even a car headlight constitute of divergent beam. So, when you talk about a bulb, it is taken as a source in which light is going in all the directions. Same with the candle. So, from a point source, light travels in all the direction that is diverging from each other, going away from each other, which we call as divergent beam. What would be the opposite of divergent beam? Convergent beam of light. What is convergent beam of light, students? A convergent beam of light is understood as when the rays of light coming from different direction meet at a point. So, let's say there is light that is coming parallel. You will learn about what is a convex lens later in your higher theta rates. But a convex lens does what? It makes all the parallel rays bend at an angle that they, they all meet at a single point. So, when the all rays, multiple rays come and seem to meet at a single point or actually meeting at a single point, we call them as a convergent beam of light. So, what is convergent? When the rays of light coming from different direction meet at a point, then such a collection of rays is called convergent beam of light. Right? So, if parallel beam of light is made to pass through which lens? This is a convex lens. It meets at a point. This kind of collection of rays is what we call as convergent beam, right? So, we have learned about different mediums through which light can pass or not pass. And we also learned about various different sources that is point source, extended source and what are the rays of light, beams of light and what are the different types of beams of light as well.